Hi, I am Alan Rich. Uh, welcome to this new program on TVJesusChrist.com. Uh, we are uh, in progress on the teaching. On the, we, this is the third part about freedom, how to be set free. Um, if you um, are watching this video, maybe on the public site, uh, please go to tvjesuschrist.com and see it in the context. Go to the archives to see the two uh, first parts of this uh, program. Otherwise, you are not going to understand uh, what we are talking about. As I promised last week, we are going to see five steps, five points, very important. It's a, this is a, a concern a knowledge to understand things deeply and I'm sure there are things that you know already but you, you need to see in a certain way in this context okay as I say this is a truth for non-believers coming to Jesus as well as uh, Christians dealing with a problem with a bondage with, with, a, with a sin with, with something they need to be set free of. So, the first step is that you have to, to understand, to realize, to recognize that you are a sinner or that you are sinning, that you have a sin. We will do another uh, message on the difference about sin and a sin, or sin and sins. So you have to recognize that you have sinned. If you are under a bondage, it means that there was a sin somewhere. A sin maybe from you, maybe from uh, your uh, family, maybe, okay, we will get to that another time. But even if it wasn't you who started that sin, you, by lack of knowledge, have opened a door and allowed somebody or a spirit or uh, an influence to come into your life. So, in fact, you have, uh, as the Bible says, perished by lack of knowledge. And this is a sin because God is telling you, and I know the Holy Spirit is teaching you, to get knowledge to pray, to listen to, uh, to men of God, to read the Bible. So you have a responsibility to know the laws, to avoid, to uh, not respect the laws. Amen? So number one, you need to understand you are a sinner or you have sinned, to recognize you, you have sinned. Some, some people, they just say, no, 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 I didn't, have, I didn't make anything, anything wrong. You have to recognize the, the, where was your fault? What, what, what did you do wrong? We can see, of course, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Of course, we take often this uh, verse concerning the non-Christians, but we also sin. We will see that in another verse as Christian, um, we have to be aware of that. Also in Romans chapter 3 verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, for we have previously charged both Jews and Greek that they are all under sin. Under sin. So uh, Paul is talking about Jews and Greek, but now we could say Everybody in this world, uh, whatever they say they are, whatever they say they believe in, are under sin. Whatever denomination you are under to, whatever doctrine you have as a Christian, you may have sinned and you have to understand that. We see also in uh, Romans uh, chapter 11 verse 32, <laughs> For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9, for there is no, for there is not a just man on the earth who does not, sorry I'm starting again, there is no a just man on earth 
who does good and does not sin. I'm telling you that because it's important, because maybe you can think back about your conversion. What kind of conversion did you do? Um, maybe one of your problem is that from the start, from the beginning, you have made a shallow conversion. Because, okay, I agree that it may not be your fault or your responsibility. You have heard a sweet, easy gospel telling you, oh yeah, uh, come to Jesus. Yeah, he died for you, but you don't even have to understand. Just, say, uh, just recognize it's because it's through Jesus that you are saved. You're going to be free. And you don't... You, you didn't really repent it. You didn't really convert it deeply. Maybe it was a shallow conversion, and this is the problem. That's why uh, uh, you have to bear with me with this topic. You may think, what does, why does he speak about the, the conversion? I'm a, I'm a long-time Christian, but you have to bear with me that this is important, and you're going to understand uh, later in the message that it is important to uh, listen to that okay as a christian i said before we sin also we can see this in 1 john uh, we can see chapter 1 in verse 8 plus 10 we will see verse 9 later uh, john was talking to christians if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar, and his word is not in us. So, this is for Christians, so I, I can read it telling you, if you say, now you, if you think, if you say that you have no sin, you deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. If you say that you have not sinned, you make God a liar. And his word is not in you. And this is for Christian. If you are a Christian, you know that you may sin. If you have sinned, what do you do with this sin? Okay? Also, I can say, what did you do with the sins? When you came to Jesus, we're going to see that. It is important. I know that the Holy Spirit is talking to you, and I'm very glad. My English is not very good. And sometimes I may forget to tell some things. But what is important is that you listen to the interpretation, to the, not my voice, but the voice of the Holy Spirit. And whatever he put on your heart now, whatever he convinces you of, do not resist the Holy Spirit. It is him who convinces of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Do not resist. If you have to stop the video and pray and repent, do it. Amen. So, we have seen the first point to understand and recognize that you are a sinner or that you have sinned if the problem you're having is coming from a sin even if it's long time ago even if you have stopped doing it you have to recognize it came through a sin number two you have to understand and recognize and realize the consequences of sin in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Amen? Spiritual death, physical death, psychological death. It is not a small wage. It, is, it has a big consequences. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, the soul who sins shall die. And we know, of course, in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, 
where God say you can do whatever you want you can eat whatever you want but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat because in the day you shall eat it you shall you shall surely die huh? so we see that sin has a big consequences you cannot say oh I had a small sin and so there there is a small consequences uh, it's uh, it's human to think that there are small uh, sins and big sins but in the Bible there are not there are not such things there is sin and that's it the third point is you have to understand that Jesus paid the price of your sin on the cross so you have to understand what Jesus what happened on the cross as I say again I want to say again you may think what what does it have to do with anything of about my deliverance this I say again, again has everything to do because even if you are Christian for a long time uh, what you have understand of what happened on the cross that day uh, has consequences on the way you see your sin and your deliverance that you see yourself in front of God so maybe you need to go back to the cross where you spend so little time you know where you just acknowledge it where the gospel was preached to you and they say to you you can have freedom oh great you know why no because Jesus died on the cross and you just walk happily in front of the cross and say oh that cross oh thanks Jesus this is maybe a problem that you may have so you have to understand and take time and ask the Holy Spirit to show you to make you understand what is sin in the eyes of God what are the consequences of sin in your life and the price that Jesus paid for you of course you can say I know he died it is said Jesus died on in my place for me but what you have to understand is that on the cross Jesus the the the, the price he paid was not just stop living you know if dying means stop breathing Jesus not just at about 33 years old say okay I stop living to save the world but Jesus took all your curse all the wrath of God all your sicknesses he pay a bigger price that you may think so we are going to get into that point next week about what Jesus did on the cross for you and by understanding this it can make a difference in the process of your deliverance in your life now I am evangelist Alan Rich you are on tvjesuschrist.com and I see you next week God bless you bye bye